This is Deepak Chopra and I'm with uh, Professor Menas uh, Kafatos. Uh, he's the Fletcher Jones uh, Endowed Professor of Computational Physics at Chapman University. We are having a conversation about some big cosmic riddles and questions and uh, we're now going to talk about something that physicists know a lot about. It's called complementarity but uh, we are going to explore it uh, in a deeper philosophical way as well as the scientific way. So, Menas, there's a, a term that's very familiar to quantum, to quantum, physicists. quantum physicists. It's called complementarity. Can you just define complementarity for me? Complementarity, um, if we want to put it in a very brief way, is a unifying principle that brings in what appear to be contradictory pictures. Each one of those contradictory pictures by itself cannot describe the whole. Both are needed to describe the unity. Or the okay, whole. so you have contradictory pictures or views of a more fundamental truth, right? So Which combines them both. Which in a way combines them both. Right. So uh, the most important complementarity is the wave particle duality is is the fundamental activity of nature a wave or a particle and the answer seems to be and you can correct me if i do a wave like experiment then it's a wave if i do a particle like experiment then it's a particle and before i do the experiment it's the potential for both it's neither okay so you can't have a wave or a particle uh, precisely at the same time, or at least on the perceptual level. You cannot have both of these complementary constructs or ideas or pictures under exactly the same condition. They have to be different conditions. Yes, but they are both aspects of a more fundamental truth. They are both aspects of a more fundamental truth, and in this case quantum theory. Okay, now um, elsewhere we have described that fundamental truth as a field of potentiality, right? Correct. As a field of potentiality, possibly a field of awareness, a dimensionless field of awareness or potentiality that then manifests as the physical universe. And we can say it starts with this uh, dance of uh, particle wave, the first yes. complementarity. Right. Would the same principle then apply to mind and brain, that they are complementary aspects of a more fundamental truth. It applies to the brain and the mind. It applies to the body and the mind. Actually, if we start going through it, it applies everywhere. It applies to living and non-living, what they call it, living and non-living entities. Dead and alive. Dead and alive. Um, uh, Vacuum and transcendent and immanent, as some may call it. Something that's not there or something that is there physically. Unmanifest and manifest. Exactly. Invisible and visible. Invisible and visible. Biological organism and the universe. Right. Um, local and non-local. Uh, biological uh, individual uh, entities and ecosystems. And ecosystems. Ecosystems. And how about uh, the local and non-local? Local and non-local is a big complementary. They all are related to each other. So local means in the realm of... Local means... Uh, Particle-like. Uh, yeah, Particle-like. In the realm of space-time and causality. Yeah. And then non-local means uh, not in the realm of space-time and causality because everything is inseparable. Space-time, energy and uh, matter are inseparable. And now here they are in their manifest form. So non-local so means... Both yeah. together. Non-local means without any specific location. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. So now we've actually come to a very interesting conclusion then that without these pairs of opposites which seem to contradict each other, there would be no universe. And precisely. In fact, um, some of the ancient Greek philosophers knew about that and they were saying if you didn't have these uh, uh, contradictions, these opposites, then there would be no universe. So paradox, contradiction, ambiguity are the essence of creation. They're the essence of the creation, and not only that, but the paradox allows free will to come in. Mm -hmm. It allows us to be 
making choices. If, if it didn't have the paradox, if it didn't have complementarity, there would be no free will. Everything would be totally determined. Free will is born in quantum uncertainty then. Absolutely. I see. Well, this is, uh, in a way, resolves the, the dilemmas that people have. Is it uh, mind-like or matter-like? Is it uh, consciousness or brain? Is it physical or non-physical? And the answer is it's both, but neither of these by itself is the truth. And they are born in a more fundamental field, which is the potential for both. They are not really totally opposite. Mm -hmm. Together as a pair, mm -hmm. they describe the whole. Mm -hmm. What we say unity, what we say the one, is really made up of complementary constructs. Mm -hmm. Ideas. And so this this is actually also birth and death are complementary to each other. And then death is not so bad after all. No, because <laughs> without death there would be no, no life. life. That's right. So death makes life possible in a sense, and life makes death possible. And in fact, if you truly understood them, uh, this then the key to it is to go beyond the duality and experience our unity, uh, that is both beyond birth and death. Correct. And actually, in a way, every day, whenever we eat food, right, we eat something else, something that used to be alive. So mm -hmm. our life presupposes the death of something else. So complementarity so is life, life is not the opposite of death. Life is no. the continuum of birth and death. Right. And birth and death are the complementarity. Two aspects. Yeah, yeah. the two aspects. Two aspects of the living universe. And we are that. We are that. Okay, that's great. Uh, I think uh, uh, this will be very interesting for people to understand that we, the universe is born in paradox and contradiction.